The motorcyclist who was hit instantly fell off his bike after the surprise attack, and the rider hit the bricks and tiles on the ground with a clutter. One of the bikers was already rendered unconscious because of the severity of Hayden's blow, but the other one who came to cause trouble on his roaring motorcycle was suddenly frightened and subconsciously turned his head to glance at Hayden's location. Then he happened to find another piece of brick that quickly enlarged in his sight and hit his helmet with a clang. After the super long-range attack, the brick knocked down the second motorcyclist who was about to escape out of pure terror. All of these things happened in what seemed like a mere flash of lightning. It was only when Hayden slowly walked towards the two fallen motorcyclists that the other people present came to their senses. As expected of my brother, he's as cool as always. Behold the true star of Wyvern City. You never fail to surprise me, boss. Greg shook his head in admiration. Hayden came to the conscious motorcyclist with a cold face. The other person was also slowly regaining his senses, and the next second he felt like he was being picked up off the ground. Go back and tell the boss behind you that when I, Hayden, am not here, maybe then they can come to show off their power. But as long as I'm here, I won't let any of you ants even breathe the same air as me. And one more thing, now that I'm back, no matter where your boss lives or what their status is, if any of you dare to harass my women again and hinder my projects, I will make you guys die without a burial, he snarled, his eyes looking pitch dark and ominous. Immediately afterwards, Hayden threw the motorcyclist against the courtyard wall like trash, and the other one could not escape the same fate either. After a series of screams, finally, some calm had returned to the community. Greg and his men surrounded Hayden, with enthusiastic expressions of admiration and pride on their faces. Hayden focused his eyes on Erica, walked over, looked her up and down, and then asked, Babe, were you injured just now? I was late. I'm really sorry. He immediately pulled her into his arms and gave her a tight embrace, to feel her touch once again after their long separation. Hi, Hayden. I've missed you. She smiled and kissed his neck. Don't worry, I'm okay. I was just shocked because those guys seemed rather dangerous. Actually, I've almost gotten used to this kind of scene at this point, because I know you'll keep me safe. Erica's face showed uncontrollable joy as she ran her fingers through Hayden's hair affectionately. The fright she had experienced had long since dissipated after his entry. At this time, she took Hayden's hand and pouted, You silly man. Why didn't you tell me in advance that you were coming back? I could have prepared a nice welcome meal for you. Hayden didn't respond and only buried his face in her neck, too joyous to speak. He held her tightly against him as if she would slip away any moment. Erica got the message, so she also smiled and held him in her arms as long as he wanted. Seeing the young couple reunited after a long time, Greg immediately turned the other way and took his men away with good sense to give them some privacy. You have worked hard these days. Why didn't you tell me if you were in trouble? Now that I am something of a big man in Wyvern City, we don't need to endure such oppression at all. The more you indulge some people, the more they try to threaten your position. You must teach them a lesson and let them know how powerless they are. You should have told me that you needed me, Erica. Don't make me worry like this again. Hayden put his arms around Erica's slender waist and began to walk around the almost demolished community with her. I know that you are powerful and everyone is afraid of you, which is why I thought that nothing could happen to me. It's just that I also know that you must be very tired in Thornton City, so I thought that there was no need to bother you with such small things. In fact, it's Serenity who is under bigger stress, Erica said slowly. Hayden frowned. What's wrong with Serenity? Is she also being harassed because of our business here? Erica nodded with a guilty expression. Serenity has made great contributions to make sure we get all the necessary sanctions and permits to begin our construction work here. So those who wanted to stop us regularly troubled her as well. 
They threatened and disturbed her so much that she almost had a nervous breakdown. I didn't dare to let her go out today. I feel really guilty, Hayden. She's facing all this just for us. According to Erica's account, although Serenity was not physically attacked, she was frightened by one of the many thugs deployed by the enemy, and she had fallen down some stairs because of it and suffered some bad bruises. Erica informed him that she was currently recovering at home. Why don't we two go see her? After all, it's for our company's sake that she had to endure so much, Erica suggested with big, pleading eyes. Hayden naturally would not refuse her proposal and readily agreed. Arriving at Serenity's residence, Erica waited at the door and rang the doorbell twice. A moment later, the sound of slippers sliding across the floor came from inside. Then the door was opened. Hayden thought he would take the initiative to say hello to Serenity, so he stood right next to Erica. However, when he saw Serenity's entire state clearly, he was stunned, and the smile on his face became stiff. He subconsciously said, Are you okay, Serenity? You look awful. Erica gasped and whacked Hayden's arm and whispered harshly, Hayden, don't be so rude. Serenity glanced at Hayden sleepily, screamed loudly, and stepped back in horror because she was in her bathrobe, her hair was unkempt, her skin had bad breakouts, and she didn't even look like she had brushed her teeth out of depression. Erica, you never told me Hayden was back, she screamed and glared at her friend in embarrassment. Erica, who was standing at the door, couldn't help but blush at this moment and coughed twice and said, Serenity, please. He didn't mean that. Hayden was just saying that you needed a pick-me-up, so here we are. She then gave Hayden a glare, so he awkwardly said, Yeah, Erica's right. You look like you need some cheering up. Serenity rolled her eyes and walked into the house with a huff and slumped onto her sofa. Hayden took a big gulp and followed her, afraid of his wife's wrath. Looking at Erica secretly, he found that the latter didn't seem to be really angry, but instead pursed her lips and snickered as if she had witnessed something rather comical. Stop laughing. My body is injured and I am uncoordinated. Please help me get myself together. Serenity glared at Erica after also noticing her silent laughter. I swear I wasn't laughing at you. Erica lied and quickly came to comfort her friend. Shut up, Erica, you really did me dirty. You just came to see me without informing me. And that was fine. But why did you bring your man with you? Are you trying to make me feel worse? She urged and complained in a low voice. Okay, let me help you get dressed, girl, Erica said with a smile and urged her friend into her bedroom. While helping her get into some decent clothes, Erica did not forget to joke. How can you blame me for bringing Hayden? He came to comfort you with good intentions. Besides, he's seen you in far worse health, right? So you don't have to be shy. Serenity only glared at Erica and resisted the urge not to cry. Hayden walked to the window in the living room and smoked by himself. At this time, he heard Erica exclaim from within the room, Your injury looks more serious than yesterday. Would you like Hayden to help you? Last time you said his technique was good and you felt much better afterwards. What? No, there's no need. Serenity shouted and sank into her bed in embarrassment, feeling utterly humiliated because Hayden had seen her in a moment of distress for the umpteenth time. Why are you refusing? Come on, he can really help you. He's a top-notch healer, Erica insisted. No, I hate it because I'm sure he thinks I'm a loser and a weakling. It's so humiliating. Serenity roared and then broke into a fit of coughs. Erica only rolled her eyes and shouted loudly, Babe, can you please come in here? We need your help. Erica, please, Serenity howled in protest. But Hayden had already entered the room with a smug smirk on his face, which made her blood boil even more. Erica wondered why there was such a weird tension between her friend and her husband. But she soon realized it was all because Serenity hated looking weak in front of others. Of course, she had no idea that her friend had seen her husband with Celeste and assumed he was having an affair. 
Erica held Serenity down and made Hayden take a look at her. A few minutes later, Hayden seriously used his own miraculous techniques to relieve Serenity's joint contusions and bruises caused by the fall. When he saw her bruises, he became even more angry at the despicable behavior of the developers who hired Donald. He found it irritating when the Golden Dragon group had sent people to provoke him several times in the past, but now they were actually attacking women? This was not something Hayden could never allow to go unpunished. So after relieving Serenity's pain, he asked directly, Can our sanatorium project's progress be sped up? It doesn't matter if we spend more money, but our intention must be clear. You are trying to fight with them, but you need to put your ego aside and be smart, Serenity huffed coldly. Besides, all the legal procedures have been completed now. We just need to proceed step by step. There is no need to waste financial and material resources just to show some awful people that you're the boss, she replied with a frown. Erica responded with a smile from the side. Our Hayden never changes his mind about what he wants to do, and what those guys did was indeed a bit excessive. If the supply of funds, manpower, and material resources can be multiplied, the construction period can be shortened by at least half. The main project will be completed by the end of the year. Does that sound good to you, babe? Hayden's eyes instantly lit up when his wife defended him so gallantly, so he smiled and nodded as he wrapped an arm around her waist. You too. Can you stop showing off your affection in front of me? Serenity rolled his eyes in protest. My work is over anyway. It's up to you what you want to do with this hospital. Hayden hesitated for a few seconds and finally said, I know you have been working hard these days, so the two of us came here to take you out to have a nice meal. Besides, I have something else I need to ask for your help with. As expected, I knew you'd want something or the other. I knew you two wouldn't be so kind as to visit me without an agenda. You know, Erica wasn't like this before. It's your company that has made her so shrewd. Serenity babbled irritably making Erica burst into laughter. What do you need, Hayden? Tell me, did you get into some trouble with someone in the capital so you want me to help you solve it? Although I'm not good at this, I can still give you some advice, she sneered. Serenity's words were full of ridicule and irritation, and she was obviously very dissatisfied with the fact that Hayden had abandoned all his commitments in Wyvern City and had just run off to Thornton City to relax, according to her. Hayden was about to cry, but had no tears, so he could only say with a smile, I won't trouble Lady Serenity for such a trivial matter. Actually, I want to tell you that I have been handed over to a few companies in the capital, and they are currently in need of talents like you. If you have free time, can you go to Thornton City to stay for a while and help me check if there are any legal troubles there, as well as if anything is in order? And of course, the whole trip will be entirely on me. Serenity was slightly surprised. You've only been in the capital for a few days, and you've actually acquired multiple companies? Who are you? Are you some sort of crook? Looking at Serenity's amazed expression, Erica couldn't be more proud. After all, it was definitely a joyful thing for her man to be praised by a feminine elite, like Serenity who had awfully high standards. Hayden didn't say much. He just briefly introduced the general situation of his companies in the capital to her and mentioned the hotel, broadcasting company, and trading company he had acquired. Excuse me? A trading company? And there is also a star-rated hotel? I thought it was only the broadcasting company that you had acquired, which was the one Erica and I went to supervise last week. When did you get the other two? Isn't your industry span a bit too big? Serenity was flabbergasted again. Erica laughed and said, Yes, Hayden's fallen into a little bit of luck. I'm so proud of him. That's right, Serenity. I was there on business and not pleasure. It's a long story that I can't get into, so Erica will fill you in later. But I'm thinking that you and my gorgeous wife can go there together, 
and help me by checking out the other two businesses because your work with the hospital project is done, right? That way you don't have to stay in a small place like Wyvern City and be bullied by Donald Dixon's bosses. I can let you manage my affairs there, and I even have a great assistant there who can help you, so you will not be disturbed anymore. Hayden expressed his final thoughts. Serenity seemed to be quite interested when he phrased his intentions clearly. After all, being able to go to the state capitol meant that she would be able to network with even more influential people and forge some powerful connections. In the final analysis, Wyvern City was just a small city without much of a future. Erica frowned slightly and said with a little dissatisfaction, You have just come back and you plan to send us away immediately? It's like you didn't even miss me. Did you do something shady there? Hayden was immediately in distress. The reason why he suddenly had such an idea was not because he was worried about his businesses in Thornton City, but because both Erica and Serenity might be in danger. He had caused too much trouble now, and the Lovelace family, the Skipper family, and the Golden Dragon group were all hunting him down. These guys would carry out revenges on him at any time and anywhere, and even implicate the people around them. So, for Erica's sake, he had to propose this and sending Serenity along to manage the businesses was the perfect excuse to make them move. Even if he would be longing for her terribly, at least Erica would not be implicated, and the Talbot family could protect her in the capital, so she would be very safe. That would Hayden alone, so he could freely use Wyvern City as a battlefield to have a good fight with all the hostile forces against him. Okay. Stop teasing him. You can come to the capital with me and be my companion. It seems that your man has important things to deal with here, Serenity said, actually speaking in Hayden's defense. Erica had a smile on her face and said, Okay, the proceedings regarding the hospital have been settled anyway. Now we just need to find a few people in charge to keep an eye on the construction work. How many days are you going to give us to hand over the work? Hayden smiled bitterly and said, the sooner the better. I have left a few confidants in the capital, as you know, Erica, but only you can take the lead and make me feel at ease. You've met Lola, so you know she's smart, but she needs supervision. I know no one better than you for the job. He smiled and planted a kiss on her cheek. Oh, and Serenity is also a great help, of course, he added as an afterthought. Serenity was offended, but conceded. Although Erica could vaguely sense that Hayden's behavior was unusual, she still agreed in the end. After lunch, Hayden went shopping with Erica and also went to Fallon's spa to say hi to her. After seeing Hayden, Fallon almost wanted to worship him as if he were the god of wealth. It was only at this time that Hayden learned that, because the medicinal powder he had specially prepared for her steam baths was so effective, her spa business was booming. So far, two other chain stores have been opened in the city, and she was even thinking about expanding into other cities. Erica, don't you ever let go of that handsome husband of yours, Fallon said brazenly and laughed loudly, making Hayden blush as always. I would never! Erica laughed and kissed Hayden's hand affectionately. He found it so bizarre that every woman he met inevitably flirted with him, but he was happy that his wife was secure, unlike their past. They had indeed come a long way. By the time Hayden Erica left the steam room, it was already night. Hayden originally planned to take Erica to the best hotel in Wyvern City, but Erica said shyly, It's getting late, and I'm sure you've missed home. So let's head there soon, because this night might be the last one for a while since you're sending me away. Besides, there's nothing we can't do at home that we can at a hotel. Hayden, who understood in seconds, stepped on the accelerator and drove at the speed of light. When he arrived at the door of the villa, he couldn't wait to lift Erica up and run inside excitedly. Unexpectedly, the door of the villa opened, and the housekeeper Sandra stood there dutifully to welcome him. The atmosphere immediately became awkward. Mr. Hayden, are you back for a while now? I have already prepared the dinner, Sandra said in a gentle and polite tone. Hayden reluctantly put down the blushing Erica. 
Then he discovered that Erica and Sandra, who originally were wary of each other, now have a good relationship, almost like sisters. So much so that Erica actually invited Sandra to join them at dinner. While eating, Hayden was obviously absent-minded, and in the end, he just wolfed down the food. Erica, who understood this, put down the tableware and ran to run him a hot bath. Sandra asked Hayden insinuatingly whether Erica really wanted to go to the capital to develop his businesses, or if he had some other agendas. Hayden was shocked by her boldness and simply said, I see that you two are quite familiar with each other now. You have taken good care of Erica recently. How about you go to Thornton City with her? I trust you to look after her, and the salary and benefits will definitely not be worse than here. Sandra was quite flattered, but she shook her head and refused without hesitation. Thank you for your kindness. But I'm still used to staying in a small place like Wyvern City. In addition, Miss Erica told me to stay here and take good care of you instead. So I must obey her. Hayden was amazed to see how Sandra had changed allegiances, but said no more and only nodded in acceptance. After all, everyone had their own ambitions. Throughout the whole night, Hayden and Erica barely rested, making up for the time they had lost as well as their days apart that were soon to come with immense love. It wasn't until almost early in the morning that the room became quiet. Hayden circulated the mystical energy in his body, and while recovering himself from his fatigue, he also quietly transferred some of it to Erica to make her stronger against any future attacks she may face. Originally, he planned to take a rest, but at this moment, the screen of his mobile phone suddenly lit up with a notification. Hayden reached for the phone and saw a message. I'm outside your villa. Come out now. This is Celeste, the text read. At this time... Hayden frowned slightly. Then he slowly pulled his arm wrapped around Erica away from her warm, sleeping body. Finally, he put on his clothes lightly and jumped out of the window to avoid meeting Sandra in the living room. Outside the gate of the community, at a corner on the opposite side of the road, Celeste stood alone like a shadow. Unless someone looked closely, she would be difficult to spot. You came out so soon. You must have not slept when I sent the message because you were busy, right? It was rare for Celeste to use such a teasing tone. Hayden grinned and went straight to the topic. I'm not discussing my sex life with you, Celeste. Please, do you have important news for me? Truth be told, Hayden was quite excited and looking forward to meeting her even at this odd hour. Celeste was very likely to bring news about the Lovelace family. This is also the main reason why Hayden returned to Wyvern City and planned to stay here and send Erica away. As you must have guessed, we have just received accurate news that the Lovelace family has recruited a new group of assassins and they will be here tomorrow. Celeste seemed to have seen through Hayden's thoughts. You could definitely have told me about this kind of thing over the phone, right? So what was your purpose for coming here? Hayden frowned, guessing that the matter might not be that simple. I'm sorry. I didn't want to disturb your reunion with your wife. But in the end, I couldn't resist the order from above. In order to save you as much time as possible, I brought you some help here especially, Celeste said while waving behind her. Unexpectedly, there were other people hiding in the shadows around the corner. Two people carried a very heavy-looking box and just took a few steps forward, still staying in the darkness, as if they didn't want to be discovered by any onlooker. After Celeste nodded at them, the two people immediately blocked the entrance of the alley, looking wary. What's this box now? Is that why you're here? To get your own work done but act like you're here to help me? Hayden frowned and teased. Celeste smiled awkwardly. Believe me, Things will be easy and simple for you this time. If everything goes well, perhaps it will be solved immediately. Next, our organization will provide you with all the support in Wyvern City, which is beyond your imagination. Hayden was too lazy to talk nonsense and went directly to the big box. Immediately, he smelled a very unique smell from the box and then asked with a solemn expression, 
Where did you get this box from? Why is there such a strong smell of death? What the hell is inside it? As expected of Hayden, you caught the key point right away. Celeste's eyes were shining brightly. After getting closer, she whispered, We excavated this from an ancient tomb, but can't open it because there is a special layer of potion soaked on the outside of this box. The boss feels that the person who made the box must have hidden some mechanism with painstaking efforts, so he obviously said only you could solve it. You are an expert in this field. Can you help us take a look? Hayden's eyebrows wrinkled tighter and tighter. In addition to exuding a unique smell of death, this box also contained a very strong smell of various drugs. But these drugs were neither a poison nor an antidote. Strange. Why does this thing look so much like an anthelmintic? Is such a big box covered with medicine just to avoid worms and parasites? Hayden muttered to himself, unable to come to a conclusion for a moment. In the end, he just reached out to open the box. Wait a minute. Celeste nervously stopped Hayden from the side. She then frowned and asked in confusion, Are you sure this box can be opened at will? What if there is something extraordinary or some mechanism inside that can destroy its contents? Wouldn't our efforts be in vain? Hayden looked a little impatient and muttered, If you think I'm not qualified for this job, then just ask your companions to carry the box back. I admit that you are really good at gathering intelligence, but I don't need your nagging right now. Celeste was speechless and had nothing to say. In the end, she could only wisely take seven or eight steps back, standing in the darkness and staring closely at the big box. Hayden slowly circulated the mystical energy in his body and even held one of his famous ice needles in his palm. In this way, even if there was any deadly sort of poisoning, he could be free of it quickly. This box was in a state of decay, and the lock on it had been broken with just a slight tug. Hayden remained calm and raised his hand to slowly open the lid. The unique smell of death became more and more intense, and Hayden had to use the effect of his powers to resist it. After the box was opened, there was a dark layer of grease inside. Holy hell. Is this corpse oil? No wonder it smells so disgusting. Hayden frowned even more. Just when he was about to make a conclusion and move away from the box, he suddenly discovered that there seemed to be something slowly moving inside the dark, greasy space. What the hell is going on here? Hayden gasped as his scalp instantly felt numb. His felt a chill down his spine and the hairs on his body instantly spike up with shock. Hayden, why are you reacting like this? What's inside? Why is your expression so strange? Celeste stood not far away and asked with a tense expression. Hayden raised his eyebrows and remarked, Don't you want to come over and see for yourself? Celeste was so suspicious of his words that she could only grit her teeth and approach slowly. After taking a look inside the box, his face instantly turned pale, and there were beads of sweat on her forehead. She trembled and said, Is there something in here that's still alive? This is impossible, absolutely impossible. Hayden looked at Celeste, who had a surprised expression on his face. Then he asked in a cold voice, it seems like you know what this thing is. Celeste shook her head vigorously and looked away decisively. I know nothing about it. Just think this thing is just disgusting. And the tomb where we dug the box out of is at least more than a thousand years old, so there's no way this gross creature could still be alive, whatever it may be. It's surely not human, right? Hayden only nodded but stayed silent. Celeste asked again, Come on, Hayden, just tell me. You seem to know this thing. Do you know its origin? Hayden frowned and responded, Do you know the saying that a centipede will die without becoming stiff? Although Celeste was a little confused, she still nodded. Hayden continued, This ancient sentence indicates that some creatures are extremely powerful and difficult to kill because of their tenacity and innate spirituality. 
Now this thing in the box is called an immortal insect. What? An immortal worm? Celeste frowned with disdain. It looks so disgusting. What's the point of living for thousands of years? It's just a gross bug. It seems that the organization suffered a big loss this time. It took a lot of effort and a lot of good personnel to retrieve this box from the bottom of the ancient tomb intact. I thought that since it was so secretly hidden and so many mechanisms were set up to make sure no one opened it, what would be inside would be a top-notch precious thing. But all this work for some bug? Unbelievable. Celeste showed a look of disappointment on her face. Hayden could see the anger and disapproval of the woman's expression. It seemed as if Celeste was very cross with the organization she was a part of because she had worked tirelessly to obtain this box, which contained something very inconsequential in her eyes. Hayden asked casually, Are you sure your superiors really don't know what's in this box? Celeste was stunned and couldn't answer for a moment. This immortal insect is not as bad as you think. This thing was first recorded in history or in secret books because of a group of alchemists who were seeking the art of immortality, Hayden explained slowly. Immortality? This bug can grant it? Celeste's eyes suddenly lit up. She subconsciously looked at the box again and then said to herself, no wonder they were willing to do whatever it takes. Sure enough, they already knew about this. Are those guys still so obsessed with immortality? Hayden stared at Celeste closely, trying to get as much information as possible from this woman. However, Celeste didn't elaborate on anything she said just now, and just asked, Those alchemists, what did they do after discovering this insect? Did they manage to find immortality? Hayden shook his head. According to the classic records, the group of alchemists were indeed full of curiosity and confidence in this weird insect at the beginning. It's a pity that they have tried so hard but have never managed to achieve immortality through the insect. However, they did obtain it through some other methods. What methods? Celeste asked again. By controlling the corpse. Hayden slowly said, with a dark look on his face. Celeste's expression became more and more complicated, so she frowned and asked, How do you know all this so clearly? Maybe you also know this evil method then, right? Hayden shook his head. I only have this much information, and I don't know the rest. Although this immortal insect is extremely tenacious, it is difficult to see in ordinary places. It is practically extinct in the world now. If you ask me for my opinion, I would advise you to return this creature to its original place and bury it to avoid causing more trouble. Because if you let this thing just run around casually, there could be great destruction that would follow. Celeste smiled bitterly. It's a pity that some things are beyond the control of little characters like us. You have helped us a lot today and we will thank you for it appropriately when the time comes. There is still some time before dawn. You should go back to accompany your wife, right? Hayden did not respond, but turned around and walked towards the entrance of his villa. He muttered softly, the mysterious map, the valley of poisons, and the immortal insect raised in corpse oil. What on earth are these guys going to do? Are they going to use all this to do some evil? Early the next morning, Erica longingly hugged Hayden's neck and said coquettishly, When can we live a normal life, babe? Hayden smiled and teased. I remember when I first entered your family. You always hoped that I could get ahead in life. Now that my career and life have improved, why have you changed your tune, my love? Erica pouted and lightly poked Hayden's chest twice. Just pretend I didn't say it. What woman doesn't want her man to be successful? But that doesn't mean I won't miss you. Anyway, just feel free to develop and grow as you please. I'll be waiting for you in Thornton City, and will return here when you ask me. She smiled before giving him a deep kiss. Before Hayden could respond, 
She stood up again, looked straight at Hayden, and said, But I have to ask you for something, and you are not allowed to refuse. What's the matter? Hayden instinctively felt that something was wrong. Melanie no longer is willing to go to school, and she has been helping me with the business some time ago, even though she's staying in the college dorm. Now that I'm going to the capital, she wants to stay here to help you. You have to convince her to finish her degree, Hayden. It's her future. I know you two didn't like each other before, but now you've settled your differences, so please be a good brother-in-law and show her the correct path, Erica said in a pleading tone. Hayden grinned. There was truly no unresolved conflict between him and Melanie. In addition, the girl had even admitted her mistake and was genuinely trying to change her ways. So he would do his best to help her now. Thinking of this, Hayden casually replied, Darling, I'll take care of it. But now, more importantly, you'll need to be extremely safe. I'm sure you're already aware that I'm sending you away for a reason, right? You also know that I am anxious to get you out of here, because I have provoked a lot of enemies. So now, I don't want to involve you or your sister in my conflicts. Erica nodded solemnly. I know, Hayden. I'm not going to ask what these conflicts are about, but I trust you blindly to solve them and do things as you think right. I have already made the matter clear to my sister. I will tell Melanie later not to disturb you unless it's necessary. Don't worry about me, either. You know I can take care of myself. Yes, I know. But that doesn't mean I'll stop watching over you, Hayden murmured as he held her in his arms, trying to steal a few extra moments before she had to depart for Thornton City. However, the moment was ruined when Serenity called to urge Erica to get ready faster, obviously impatient. Erica gave him an apologetic look and slipped out of bed to get ready for the journey. Hayden sighed and called Greg to take a few smart and capable men from his gang to escort Erica and Serenity and stay with them in case they were in danger. He was also reassured because he had Lola as a support system, so he quickly called her and informed her of the situation. Don't worry, I'll take care of Miss Erica, the girl said enthusiastically. After completing all the arrangements, he bid Erica goodbye with a heavy heart and several kisses and promised to see her as soon as possible. Hayden then sighed and drove to the community that was being rebuilt as per Erica's plans. Although Serenity and Erica no longer directly managed the affairs here, they made very detailed arrangements for the next steps before leaving. The contractor assured Hayden and said that he would speed up the progress of the project with additional funds and manpower. Everything was going according to Hayden's plans. He was to stay in Wavern City to manage his businesses and also make it his battleground for his impending showdown with the Lovelace family. Hayden looked up at the skies and said solemnly, Lovelaces, I'm ready for you. Now show me your faces if you dare. After staying in the community for less than ten minutes, his phone started ringing. Hayden sighed since had no time to rest even in his own hometown. When he took a look, he was pleasantly surprised because it was his old friend Seymour Jenkins calling. Hayden, my lad. I heard that you have returned to Wyvern City. Why didn't you call me? I'm offended. Seymour was as forthright and direct as ever. Hayden responded with a smile. Old man, I was planning to ask you to have tea with me very soon. I've just had a lot going on. Excuse me? Don't be rude to me. I'm at Blakely Villa and we old guys are having a bit of a party. You better drive over here immediately, Seymour ordered. Hayden chuckled and politely refused. Now, I actually have some business to take care of. But tell Mr. Silas and the rest that I said hi. Hayden, believe me, I have a reason for summoning you here. Come here quickly, we have something important to discuss. And I guarantee you will be very interested. Seymour's tone suddenly became solemn. Hayden agreed and did not dare to refuse Seymour's invitation. He didn't fully understand what his old friend was trying to tell him, but he knew he had to pay his respects and visit him. He did not think that Seymour had any urgent business with him, and perhaps just wanted to get together and chat after not seeing each other for a long time. 
Unexpectedly, Sylvia was waiting at the gate of the construction site soon after, with a serious look on her face. This made Hayden realize that these old men must have encountered some kind of hiccup. Is there any trouble at Blakely Villa? Hayden got into the car and asked. Having not seen each other for a while, Sylvia returned to her cold expression and ignored Hayden. While driving, she responded casually, You'll know when you get there, won't you? Hayden felt irritable and simply stopped talking. However, Sylvia, who was sitting in the driver's seat and looking at the road ahead, felt slightly bad for being so cold earlier. So she said, I don't want to say anything. It's best you find out from the old men yourself. Hayden relaxed a little, but then found that the other person's left arm seemed to look a little strange. So he raised my nose and smelled it. In addition to Sylvia's unique perfume, there was also the smell of plaster and paint on her arm. Hey, what are you doing? She huffed, flustered. Sylvia, have you been injured recently? Your arm looks off, Hayden asked without thinking. Sylvia subconsciously reached out and touched her left arm. Then she frowned and looked at Hayden as if she was looking at a monster, and asked suspiciously, How do you know? You asked others about me. Hayden smiled and said, I'm not interested in how you got injured, let alone inquire about it. I just saw that your left hand is not working very well, so I was just asking. Why are you so arrogant? Sylvia's face suddenly turned red, a little embarrassed, more angry. Fine, you're right. Hayden was silent again, but this time Sylvia couldn't stand it anymore and said proactively, I don't know if your medical skills have deteriorated in recent times. How could you not tell that the injury on my body has been bothering me for a long time? The doctor said that it will take at least a year and a half to fully recover. Although she did not say it clearly, the meaning was already obvious. Hayden smiled and said, If you want me to help you treat your illness, why can't you be more straightforward? Why are you beating around the bush? There is no incurable disease in the world. Only incompetent doctors. Sylvia endured Hayden's ridicule. In order to get treatment from the miraculous doctor and get rid of the pain and inability to move as soon as possible, she could only lower her head and stay silent at this time. She finally said, The old men are still waiting. Please help me and take a look at it later, after your business with them is over, and I will owe you a favor. Hayden readily agreed. Half an hour later, the car had slowly swerved into Blakely Villa. This place still looked as majestic as ever, but it was not as lively as when he came here a few times before, and it seemed a lot more deserted. Maurice greeted Hayden at the entrance with a smile on his face and took the initiative to say hello. The old men are waiting in the living room. I'll take you there. After a few pleasantries, Maurice began to lead the way. In the hall, Silas, Seymour, Sidney, and Sigmund were all there, seated in the luxurious sitting area. They were gathered together with frowns on their faces as if they were discussing something. At this time, Seymour saw Hayden. He immediately showed a smile and beckoned him to come over. You guys don't need to be so polite. I'm just a junior. Hayden smiled and said humbly, Why are you so polite to us? Even though we are all well-known in Wyvern City, in terms of means and abilities, even if we are bundled together, we can't compare to one-tenth of you, Sigmund said with a big grin. Hayden, I'm a straightforward person. I wanted you here today to ask for help. You can't refuse us, Seymour shouted in a loud voice. The faces of the old men became solemn again, and when they looked at Hayden, they were obviously a little uneasy. Maurice had already left the room sensibly and closed the door behind him. The atmosphere in the hall became more solemn and dull. Gentlemen, you don't need to be polite to me. Just say whatever you want. After all, we are all friends. As long as I can help, I will never refuse you, Hayden said straightforwardly and made his stance clear. The old men looked at each other once more. In the end, Silas said, Hayden, 
I know what I have to say will catch you by surprise, but I'll just say it. We hope to elect you to be the next president of Wyvern City's Chamber of Commerce. Wait. What? President? Hayden, who had just sat down, stood up again after listening to Silas's words, his head full of questions. He only had a vague idea of who and what the president of a Chamber of Commerce was, but he obviously didn't have much of a clue. He never thought that he would be involved with such a position, and he couldn't understand why these old men were singing this tune today. Looking at Hayden's confused expression, Silas continued, We also know that this proposal is a bit excessive and hasty. However, the only one who can save the entire Wyvern City's business community right now is you. No matter what Silas said, Hayden instinctively planned to refuse. This seemed like too much work, and he was not prepared to take on such a heavy-duty responsibility. This time he had returned to Wyvern City specifically to deal with the Lovelace family's revenge on this familiar battlefield and obtain more information about his family's ruin. The last thing on his mind was to be involved with the Chamber of Commerce. However, just when Hayden was about to refuse, Silas suddenly lowered his voice and said, There is another important reason why you should take up this position. This matter involves the Lovelace family that we discussed before. What? Hayden was surprised again, looking carefully at Silas's expression and behavior. It didn't look like he was joking. I'll give a brief explanation. This group of people tried their best to force me to abdicate from my throne earlier, not only because I had great influence in Wyvern City, but more importantly because at that time, I secretly controlled the entire Chamber of Commerce here. Since I controlled the economic lifeline of the city, they came after me because they wanted this power. Silas looked at Hayden with meaningful eyes. Hayden tried hard to clear his thoughts and asked, Are you elders planning to fight with the Lovelace family now? This seems unnecessary after all. According to my understanding, those guys are not an ordinary organization. Wouldn't it be better for you all to stay away from such dangerous people? Boy, do you look down on us old men, Seymour shouted immediately. Then he frowned and said bitterly, Yes, we are quite old, but have managed to gather a lot of power here. Who would dare to mess with us here? The problem is that now the Lovelace family has no intention of giving us a way to survive. Instead, they are preparing to install their own cronies to completely replace our position in Wyvern City and take away all the resources in our hands by force. Hayden looked at Seymour with surprised eyes and then turned to Silas and asked, Is this true? Silas nodded solemnly and said, This is exactly why we need you. Hayden was extremely puzzled and even alarmed when so much information was given to him all at once by the old men. Least of all, he could not even fathom that the Lovelace family, whom he had been waiting for all this time, would collide into his life in such a bizarre way. Why were they trying to oust the old men and take away their influence? Were they doing this to get to him, or did they have other bigger plans of evil? At this time, Hayden could understand the complex situation and thoughts of Silas and the other old men, but there was still an unavoidable look of hesitation on his face as he said, There may actually be other candidates who are far more suited for the position of President of the Chamber of Commerce. A few months ago, I was just an unknown person. Even if you elders strongly recommend me, I might not be able to convince the public, right? Silas reached out and touched the beard on his chin and persuaded him with a confident look. You are too presumptuous. Although you have only been around for a short time, I'm afraid you still don't know the influence of your name in the entirety of Wyvern City at this time, right? I can guarantee that as long as a few of us old guys jointly recommend you and you don't object, we can definitely make this happen. Seymour nodded and assured, Even if there are individuals, families, or groups with ulterior motives that will interfere with this, we can overcome all these difficulties by working together because no one has the collective power us four old men have. 
The intentions of the old men were quite obvious. That is, even if they had to pull some strings, they were more than ready to do so to make Hayden fight for the position of president of the Chamber of Commerce. Hayden said bluntly, According to my own information channels, the Lovelace family has sent people to Wyvern City because their original intention is to deal with me. You must be aware of their devious methods already. In order to achieve their goals, they can carry out assassinations, kidnappings, and even other vicious actions. I don't want you elders to be in any kind of danger because of me. You must understand. Although his words had not been finished, the meaning was already obvious. Seymour snorted and said, The Lovelace family is not as daring as you think. Previously, they could send people to assassinate you, and even secretly kidnapped Silas's nephew, all of which was done quietly. But we are all well known in Wyvern City. The more we stand up to confront them under such circumstances, the more they will shrink back. Hayden nodded, feeling that Seymour made a good point. Hayden, even us old guys who were originally aloof and unwilling to intervene in the dispute, are ready to come out now and take action. I hope you are still not planning to distance yourself from us. Sidney, who had not spoken much, stared at Hayden intently. That's right, my boy. Don't keep thinking about what danger we might be in. We old men have lived long and fulfilling lives, but now that the entire city is under threat, we must do our duty and stand up for what is right. Don't worry about us. Just let us all work together and drive these villains out of our precious city for good, all right? Sigmund also urged from the side with shining and hopeful eyes. When Hayden saw his enthusiasm, his heart immediately melted. He was beyond grateful and overwhelmed by these old men who had so much fain in him. Now that things had come to this, he could only reluctantly agree. Only then did the old men show signs of relief on their faces. Fine, I accept. Then what should I do next? Hayden scratched his head. Wait for our next announcement. The specifics will be completed by us. You lay low now, and we will let you know when everything is set. When the Chamber of Commerce's current president is running for the election, you can just show up. Of course, it's best not to cause any negative news until then, because people will definitely be watching you closely. Silas suddenly showed a bit of ambiguity when he spoke. The other old men also cast suggestive looks at Hayden. Hayden felt helpless for a while and agreed casually, not knowing exactly what they meant. After leaving Blakely Villa, Sylvia was once again sent to Hayden's side by Silas, because she had to drive him home. To put it bluntly, she was also given the task of supervising him to prevent him from causing any negative news. Hayden took the initiative to drive instead of Sylvia because of her injury, and said casually, You are injured, so once we get to my house, I will take a good look at you. Before this, don't make any big moves. Sylvia showed some gratitude, and her attitude towards Hayden obviously improved a lot. The next second, Hayden's phone rang, and this time, the caller was Juliet. Hi, Juliet. I was just coming to see you, Hayden said. Juliet snorted. You said that just because I called you, right? When did you come back? I'll treat you to a meal to catch up with you. It's been a long time. Hayden was still thinking about the land that Juliet mentioned earlier, so he agreed without thinking. You took forever to agree to meet the old men, but only a second to meet a beautiful lady. You couldn't wait to send your wife away to see another woman? Sylvia sat in the passenger seat and started teasing him. How much have you been spying on me? Jeez. Hayden suddenly began to regret letting Sylvia stay with him. But he was too lazy to explain anything at this time, so he drove all the way to the place Juliet mentioned. It was a grand villa with an elegant environment and unique style. Juliet saw the car and ran out excitedly. Before Hayden could speak, she punched his arm and said loudly, You're finally back. I thought you were so happy in the capital that you didn't care about us anymore. Follow me into the house quickly. I have a business to discuss. When Juliet noticed something strange in Hayden's expression, she saw the young and beautiful girl sitting in the car. Who is this? your assistant? 
I heard from Brittany that you are thriving in the provincial capital, and there is a little girl with a maverick personality beside you all the time. It can't be her, right? Goodness, Hayden, how many women do you have? Juliet was as outspoken as always, and she eyed Sylvia suspiciously. Don't talk nonsense if you don't understand the situation. I'm just responsible for watching him. I'm not his assistant or secretary. Sylvia got out of the car with an angry look. Must you be so fierce, Juliet gasped with wide eyes. However, she is quite beautiful. You have good taste, Hayden, Juliet teased because she was in a good mood after seeing Hayden. Hayden did not explain much about Sylvia's specific identity. Immediately afterwards, Sylvia was pulled into the house by a bubbly Juliet. She sat down on the wicker chair in the yard elegantly and paid attention to their surroundings. Last time you said that there was something wrong with the piece of land you got from that bet, right? So could you tell us more specifically what exactly is the matter? Hayden didn't exchange too many pleasantries and got straight to the point. I didn't expect you to care so much about me to remember this. Juliet looked grateful, and her eyes instantly filled with tears. Hayden coughed twice and quickly explained, After all, you are also my disciple, and you are an important asset to me. And since I was present when this deal was done, maybe I can help you by being a witness or something. I happen to be free now, so if I can help, I will not refuse you, obviously. You shouldn't have rushed here just for me. That's so sweet of you. But that piece of land, Juliet trailed off as her face suddenly became depressed at the very mention of the problem. After hesitating for a few seconds, she sighed and continued. I was scammed, Hayden. What a damn shame. It's such a good piece of land, and my family has been eyeing it for years. Whether it's the location or the prospects, that plot is perfect. It's such a travesty what happened. Tell me more, Juliet, Hayden urged. Juliet sighed and lamented. Where do I begin? I thought I was helping my family by acquiring that land. But who would have thought that it would turn into a dangerous place and almost kill my people? Kill your people? What do you mean? And what dangers were there at that place? Hayden frowned, feeling that it was really strange to hear such words from the wealthy heiress. Juliet scratched her head and said bitterly, That's what was said to me, and I bet that bastard Tristan had already noticed that something was wrong with that land, so he deliberately handed it down to me, as if he's so generous. I originally planned to help my family acquire this land, because they always had their eye on it, but I didn't expect that hundreds of millions of dollars would be spent in vain. Now the land is being sold at a loss, and no one wants it. That is very bizarre, Hayden said with a strange look on his face. Take me there to have a look, and tell me about the situation on the way. There are always ways and means to solve everything. Getting angry in a hurry will not solve the problem, he said decisively and stood up. It is so nice that you are willing to help. But this time it's not medical help, Hayden. Are you sure you're up to the task? Juliet hesitated as if she didn't have much faith or confidence in him. However, seeing that he was resolute, she finally ran upstairs to change her clothes and prepare to leave. At this moment... Hayden came to the yard and looked at Sylvia, whose face was not very happy. He said, I'm going to accompany Juliet to the outskirts of the city now. Do you want to tag along? Actually, you don't even have to stay with me all the time. Wouldn't it be better to do something you like if you're not too thrilled about coming along? It's really okay, in the worst case, I will explain to Mr. Silas later myself. Hayden had completely good intentions, but Sylvia curled her lips and said, are you afraid that I will follow you around and ruin your good life with this rich lady? Men are all really big creeps. None of them are good. Then she looked at him in disdain and said, Don't worry. I won't cause trouble for you when we leave. I have received an order and I will never let you leave my sight. Hayden was helpless and then continued to approach Sylvia, 
rolling up his sleeves and saying, Great speech, now take off your shirt. Excuse me. What are you going to do? Don't think that just because the boss sent me to take care of you, I have to agree to everything. How dare you be so shameless? Sylvia was frightened and quickly jumped up from the chair. There was a little anger and hurt in Hayden's eyes when she accused him. His mouth twitched twice and he said in a strange voice, Sister, what are you thinking about? I have never thought much about you or any other woman. Erica is the only one I care about. I just wanted to treat the injuries on your shoulder and arm. Why would you assume anything else unless you've had strange thoughts? Sylvia blushed and realized that she was too sensitive and nervous. Finally, she took off her shirt, and underneath was a very close-fitting vest that clung to her toned physique, which also showed her diligence to maintain herself. Then again, as one of Silas's trusted bodyguards, perhaps this was necessary. There was only a slight bruise on her shoulder, and the elbow joint had obviously been treated with medicine. Hayden stretched out his hand to touch her shoulder and asked, Why are you injured like this? What led to such an injury? You should have told me you were in so much pain, you weird girl. I would have treated you earlier. This looks ghastly. Unconsciously, Hayden's tone and expression showed that despite their constant bickering and fighting, he did indeed care about her like a close friend. Sylvia's face turned even redder out of embarrassment because she had been so rude to him earlier. She shook her head and replied honestly, I was anxiously rushing to this place and accidentally fell while riding a motorcycle. I thought it was nothing at the time, but unexpectedly the pain became more and more severe in the past two days. There have been a lot of complicated things going on in the Blakely family recently, and I was too embarrassed to ask for a leave to go to the hospital. Hayden heard her explanation and sighed. How can you not cherish yourself at all? If your arm's treatment would have been delayed for two more days, it would probably be useless. If you want to take care of Mr. Silas, you have to be in top shape. You get that, right? No one will judge you for taking a day off. Don't forget that you're human, too. Hayden advised, but also instinctively wondered what was happening with the Blakely family. Were the Lovelaces causing them trouble again? While speaking, he quickly brought his fingers together and bent them into the shape of a griffin's claw, which was directly mounted on Sylvia's fair shoulder. Hayden frowned for a moment because her injury was more serious than he had imagined. He was shocked that she had endured such pain and not said a word. Hayden, please don't scare me. Is it really so serious? Sylvia's voice was trembling when she spoke. Hayden slowly sent his mystical energy into the bruised area on her shoulder and said at the same time, The ligaments and joints are strained and dislocated, and there is a large amount of congestion blocking your blood vessels. As time goes by, your arm won't be able to use any force. Sylvia gasped immediately. Oh my God, what do I do now? Am I really useless? No, because you're lucky to have met me. Hayden laughed at her playfully. He then used his hands slightly to force the powerful energy into her arm more rapidly, dispersing congestion and allowing the ligaments to be repaired and the joints to return to their original positions. Sylvia let out a small cry when she felt a sharp pain in her arm before it completely dissipated. What are you two doing? Can you please behave yourselves? If the neighbors hear this, they will think that I, Juliet Slayton, have a weird lifestyle. My family would be so ashamed. Juliet changed into sportswear and was standing at the door with her lips pursed, laughing. Sylvia was angry and ashamed, so she could only glare at Hayden fiercely and say nothing. You, a disciple, have a bad attitude, don't you? Do you dare to make fun of your teacher? You don't want me to help you anymore? Or do you not want to continue learning from me? Hayden straightened his face and started to teach her a lesson. Juliet was so frightened that she shook her head and trotted over. Standing on her tiptoes, she stretched out her peachy and tender palms to Hayden and said charmingly, Old master, I know I'm wrong. Now tell me, why was this beauty so seriously injured? 
Sylvia looked at Juliet and then at Hayden. Is she your apprentice? Not your lover? Hayden grinned and said nothing. Instead, Juliet responded, There are many women around my master, but I have never seen him really interested in anyone. He is a good man. Okay, stop talking nonsense. Let's set off now that we're ready, Hayden muttered and began to walk to the car. Sylvia was pleasantly surprised to find that the swelling on her shoulder had dissipated, but the skin was slightly red. As expected of Hayden, your skills are simply amazing, Slivia praised on this rare occasion. She then turned to Juliet and said, You're lucky to have such a talented teacher. He really is the best of the best. Of course, it was clear she was only saying so to mend fences with Hayden and apologize for doubting his intentions earlier. Hayden acknowledged her attempt with a nod as he waited for them in the car. An hour later, the car arrived outside the city to an empty space in the suburbs. Originally, Hayden felt that the dangerous place Juliet mentioned was an exaggerated description or some kind of misunderstanding. But after he saw the surrounding terrain and situation clearly, his eyebrows gradually tightened. He didn't do anything else after getting out of the car. First, he quietly walked forward for more than 10 meters and then reached out to dig out a little bit of the mud on the ground and inspect it. Ew, Hayden, why are you touching the ground? It's so dirty. I'll just ask a worker to do whatever you want. Juliet fussed like a rich girl and quickly took out a tissue from her handbag. Stop. Don't come here, he immediately warned. Hayden asked with raised eyebrows. This really a dangerous place. Has anyone died here? Juliet looked at Hayden with a surprised expression. She then looked around to see if there was anyone else around the area, then nodded and whispered, So you have also received the news. Then were you pretending not to know before? Hayden frowned. No. I only judged it when I inspected the earth here. Although my family has passed down medical skills from generation to generation, we also have very heightened senses that can help us inspect the spiritual condition of a place. The aura of death is pervasive here, and there is a faint smell of blood in the soil. So I came to this conclusion. You are not a god, are you? Is there anyone in the world that you can't do? The expression on Juliet's face turned into one of admiration. After listening to Hayden's mysterious explanation, she somehow began to feel that Hayden might really be able to help with today's matter. Then she took Hayden's hand and asked with sincerely pleading eyes, Can you completely figure out what is going on here? If you can solve this for me, this piece of land will become valuable again, and I won't be a train wreck in the family anymore. They all hate me right now because I fell for Tristan's scheme. Looking at Juliet's anxious and expectant look, Hayden responded calmly, I don't know much about what has happened here, but if you are in trouble, I will do my best to help. I will try my best to restore this land. Juliet looked relieved after hearing his positive answer and said, Thank you so much, Hayden, really. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. I have to find a higher place to see the terrain clearly. Let's walk there and you can also tell me in detail what happened here recently, he said, and began to walk towards the higher plains of the land. Juliet nodded quickly and said, Actually, just a few days ago, we completed all the procedures here and invited workers to start some preliminary construction. Unexpectedly, on the night when work started, two of the overtime workers suddenly went crazy. They picked up the tools in their hands and started attacking the people around them, Several workers were gravely injured, and the rest had no choice but to run for their lives and call the police. When the police arrived, they discovered that the two men had killed one worker on the spot and seriously injured many others. Although this matter originally caused quite a fuss, my family immediately came forward to provide a high compensation. So we managed to suppress the matter. Juliet then took a pause and continued. But who knew that the same thing would happen to the second batch of workers who came here to work? Thanks to precautions this time, only some people were injured, 
But since then, the outside world has begun to spread rumors that this area is haunted and is a dangerous place. So no workers are willing to come here to start construction. And we want to transfer this land over to a good buyer as soon as possible. But no one wants to buy it. Her explanation was quite puzzling, and even Sylvia frowned in confusion. Hayden looked around several times and found several large machines piled near the center. The further he walked forward, the more he felt that something was not quite right about the surrounding atmosphere. There seemed to be a very lurid smell in the air which wanted to penetrate into his body, making Hayden very irritable. He felt as if the more he inhaled it, the more it made him want to get violent. Is this soil one of the sinful soils mentioned in my inherited memory? No wonder it makes people crazy. Anyone with a weak mind will easily fall into this trap, he muttered to himself. He prepared to climb on the bulldozer, take a thorough look at the surrounding terrain, and find the source of this aura filled with hostility. But he never expected that Juliet, who had been staying close to him and looked very nervous, would gradually turn pale at this moment. The look in her eyes also changed from fearful to fierce, as if possessed by a demon. Without warning, Juliet bent down and picked up a stone from the ground, raised it with both hands, and aimed to hit Hayden hard on the back of the head. Hayden, oh my god, be careful! Sylvia, who had been staying in the car and not following Hayden and Juliet, could see what was happening clearly. At this time, she opened the car door and jumped out, and shouted his name at the same time, alerting him. Watch out, Hayden! Hayden, who was originally concentrating on examining the terrain, actually had a premonition that something ominous was going to happen. When he heard Sylvia's shout, he subconsciously quickly jumped to the side and to dodge Juliet's incoming attack. The stone in Juliet's hand hit the bulldozer in front of Hayden hard, causing sparks to fly in the dark night. The strange thing was that Juliet, who was originally soft and weak, now seemed to have the strength of a raging bull. At this time, even though her fingers were bleeding from her rough handling of the rock, she still grabbed another heavy stone from the ground and chased Hayden with a sinister smile. What the hell is this? This place has also affected Juliet and made her evil. Hayden broke out in a cold sweat. At this time, while avoiding Juliet's ferocious and unorganized attacks, he was also quickly thinking of how to deal with her without hurting her, knowing that she was under the influence of some higher powers beyond her control. What's going on? How did you offend this woman? She looks like she wants to get rid of you, Sylvia shouted as she ran over. Seeing that Juliet could not really hurt Hayden, she was relieved at this time, but also suspicious of why the girl attacked him so viciously. She then turned to Juliet and prepared to restrain her. She is being possessed by evil spirits, infected by the hostility of this soil. Don't hurt her, Hayden instructed, because he fully knew what Sylvia was capable of. He was worried that Sylvia would really hit her hard, so he hurriedly warned her. While Juliet was swaying and losing her balance, Slivia took two steps forward and walked diagonally around Juliet's side. I'm going to seal off her movement, then we'll figure out what to do with her. Hayden thought of a way out of his anxiety. The ice needle he always carried quickly struck out and accurately penetrated the important acupuncture points on Juliet's chest. In this way, Juliet's entire body's energy veins were sealed, and the hostility contained in it could not circulate around her whole body, and naturally, it could no longer bring bad consequences to the young heiress. It's just that Juliet was originally just a weak woman, so her body was suddenly contaminated with this filthy air was easy to contain, and the side effects were immediately relieved. Hayden began to try to send more of his mystical energy in to protect Juliet from harm and force the harmful energy out of her. Originally, this treatment seemed foolproof, but just when Hayden made a move, Sylvia, who had just been standing aside and making sarcastic remarks, suddenly became silent. Hayden looked at her in fear and realized that her pupils had also become dilated and her eyes had a dead look in them. Oh gosh, this is not good. Hayden suddenly realized what was happening. Then he subconsciously looked at Sylvia, 
and a cold flash ran directly towards his throat. It was a sharp knife that glinted under the moonlight menacingly. Hayden had never been so truly panicked for a long time. Unlike the weak and delicate Juliet, Sylvia is a master of combat and is a trained killer. Hayden heaved his body to the side by force, because he knew that if the knife would pass through his throat, he would just die on the spot. His move was quick but effective, although he managed to dodge the weapon only by a hair's breadth. Sylvia was indeed rigorously trained. At this time, her strength and speed were stronger than before due to the malicious forces that controlled her. Hayden escaped her attack but had to think about how to contain her. In fact, in his current state, it was not too difficult to control or knock down Sylvia. But she was completely crazy now, waving a delicate little dagger in her hand, full of killing intent. She was under a spell, so she acted without caring about the identity of the other person and only had murder on her mind. Hayden still had to protect Juliet from harm, so the situation suddenly became tense and dangerous. How would he get out of this soup? Looking depressed because of his awful fate, Hayden held the paralyzed Juliet in his arms, avoiding Sylvia's constant attacks. If his opponents saw this scene, they would probably fall over from laughter, especially that wretched woman from the Lovelace family. Fortunately, there were several large abandoned machines around. Hayden took advantage of the terrain and barely managed to avoid Sylvia's attack with Juliet. Seeing that Juliet's inner strength was almost exhausted, Hayden simply took a deep breath, quickly jumped on the excavator in front, and stuffed Juliet into it. After closing the door, he could concentrate on dealing with Sylvia, who was only getting more violent by the minute. After shouting her name a few times to awaken her, it was determined that Sylvia had no active consciousness at all, so Hayden wanted to follow the trick as before and prepared another ice needle to seal off all of Sylvia's movements. However, as soon as he dipped his hand into his emergency weapons kit, he realized that he had only one ice needle on him which was firmly lodged in Juliet's chest. Hayden had nothing else to use, so he simply extended his fingers out of his palm, shaped it into a griffin claw, and clasped it directly on Sylvia's heart. At this juncture, he used his powerful energy to completely seal the energy veins on her body. Since she was practically given a jolt of his mystical energy at such a high dosage, Sylvia woke up immediately, but she couldn't move his body for the time being. She stared at Hayden fiercely and cursed, you lech. What are you going to do? Who do you think I am? I'm just here to help you, not be your plaything. Get your hands away quickly, or I will chop off your paws. Hearing such a fierce threat, Hayden wanted to cry, but had no tears. Continuing to deliver his magical energy into her body, he quickly explained, Your symptoms became the same as Juliet's just now. You were hit by the foul energy here, so you lost consciousness and went crazy with bloodlust. Take a look for yourself. You are still holding a knife in your hand. When Hayden said this, Sylvia lowered her head subconsciously and found that the knife was tightly held by her. Moreover, the scene where Juliet suddenly picked up a stone and tried to hit Hayden just now was still vivid in her mind. Even if what you said is true, now that I have recovered, why don't you take your hands away quickly? Are you deliberately taking advantage? I really despise men like you. Sylvia blushed. Even though she knew she had wrongly blamed Hayden, she was unwilling to admit her mistake. Hayden raised his eyebrows and said, The negative energy in your body has only sealed, but not completely expelled. If I stop now, your energy and blood will be weak in the future, and your physical condition will be much worse than before. Of course, I won't object if you insist. And although you're a remarkable woman, I have no interest in you, so the sooner you get that, the better. Besides, you've seen how hot Erica and I are for each other, haven't you? You! Sylvia almost screamed, her face growing several degrees hotter from shame and embarrassment. It was really unbearable to be ridiculed by Hayden so mercilessly. But she was worried that there would be serious consequences if she refused his treatment. So she could only blush, bite her mouth shut, 
and let Hayden do his job. A few minutes later, Hayden showed a satisfied expression on his face and slowly took his hands back and rubbed them. He said casually, It's okay now. You should take Juliet away and leave this place soon. Otherwise, another attack might happen again at any time. Sylvia didn't dare to stay any longer either, and immediately followed Hayden's instructions and pulled Juliet's unconscious body back to the car. This whole situation has turned so troublesome. Even if I stay here for a long time, I will inevitably be unable to bear this foul energy myself. Hayden frowned. The mystical energy in his body was precisely why he was not affected by this dangerous atmosphere at all. Standing on the top of the excavator, Hayden carefully looked at the surrounding environment and found that the terrain and the land around the mountains were extremely weird. Plunging into his ancestral archives, which possessed even the slightest knowledge of such matters, Hayden made a mental calculation. He quickly jumped off the excavator, then ran to the side of the car, opened the door, and got inside, preparing to leave the place immediately before things got any worse. How's it going? Have you found a solution? Sylvia asked, but another voice interrupted her. What did I do just now and why do I feel extremely sore all over my body? Juliet, who had regained her consciousness just now, saw Hayden and immediately asked anxiously. Just go back home and have a good rest tonight. It's my fault that I didn't expect this kind of a situation at all, but I have already figured out a method for how this can be fixed. As long as conditions permit, I estimate that it will take two or three days to completely resolve this place, Hayden responded slowly. What? Is this true? Juliet asked loudly with excitement on her face. Sylvia drove the car with a strange look on her face. Hayden nodded and said solemnly, I have indeed come up with a solution, but there must be a prerequisite. What are the conditions? Even if you ask me to marry you, it's no problem. Juliet was in a good mood. Hayden's mouth twitched twice. That's not necessary at all, Juliet. Stop talking nonsense. But you have to prepare a lot of digging equipment for me, and there is also an antique from the past that I will need to cleanse the area. The older it is, the better. But it must be extremely precious and expensive. This thing must be absolutely indispensable. What? An antique? Juliet frowned and tilted her head. Then she said, That won't be a problem. My family has collected a lot of antiques and other things over the years, so it shouldn't be difficult to fulfill your condition. But I hope you'll bring it back to me safely, or my father will be very angry. I'll find someone to take care of it as soon as I get back. Hayden nodded and said, Well, I think I should be able to bring it back unharmed. Great. But what do you plan to do with it? Are you an exorcist now? Sylvia asked curiously. Juliet nodded and said, Actually, I had the same question. Hayden rolled his eyes and remarked, It's best if you both stop asking me any further questions. You've already caused me a lot of trouble today. Sylvia blushed and Juliet said apologetically, Yes, tonight you worked so hard to accompany me and almost got hurt. Why don't you let me do my best and treat you to a good meal? Sylvia, who was driving, coughed twice, and Hayden responded directly, Thanks, but not tonight, Juliet. I have other things to deal with. Just tell me when you have everything ready. Solving the trouble here as soon as possible will also save you from further losses. Juliet nodded in agreement and separated from Hayden halfway, getting into her own car that was waiting at the city's center for her. I'm going back home now, so you don't have to follow me like this. You have to go back and find a place to rest. At worst, you can come back tomorrow morning to keep spying on me, Hayden retorted, because really couldn't stand having someone to watch him around all the time, especially one with a bad temper like Sylvia. You must want to go back to the hidden beauty in your house, right? I didn't expect that your life would be so colorful, Sylvia said with a look of disdain. Her name is Sandra, and she's the housekeeper. Why don't you get your own head out of the gutter, woman? He frowned and said impatiently. Now I need time to myself. I want all of you pesky women to leave me alone. Fine, Sylvia snarled irritably. But I'll be back first thing in the morning. 
Hayden was relieved by her final decision. After dropping Hayden off at the entrance of the villa area, Sylvia drove away to the Blakely house. Hayden walked forward slowly and leisurely, paying close attention to his surroundings. But he had some doubts in his heart. Celeste had repeatedly warned him before that people from the Lovelace family might come to retaliate at any time. But now it seemed as if they were not making any movement. He had sent his wife away to keep her safe during this incoming war. But was it all useless? When would they come for him? Back in the villa, the housekeeper Sandra, who had been waiting for a long time, quickly helped Hayden by fixing him up a meal and preparing a hot bath for him. Is there anything special that has been happening here while I was away during the day? Hayden asked casually. Sandra blinked, thought for a while, and then replied, There is nothing wrong. It's just that after Miss Erica left, I stayed here alone and felt deserted. If there is nothing else left for you to do, you can go out for a walk or something. You are my personal housekeeper, not a maid or a dog, so you don't need to be here around the clock. There is a card here which is for household purposes, but if you need anything you can use it as well. You can decide what you need to buy here. Hayden took out a bank card and handed it to the other party. Sandra was a little flattered and waved her hands repeatedly, trying to refuse, but Hayden couldn't help but put the card into her hands and then went upstairs. Sandra had taken great care of Erica, the house, and even him, so she absolutely deserved a little treat once in a while. Hayden, who had entered his bedroom, habitually stood behind the curtains and looked around through the gaps to see what was going on outside. He was aware that this was a very odd habit, but ever since the Lovelaces had launched multiple surprise attacks on him and even dared to threaten his grandma, as well as come to his own yard, he felt that he always had to be vigilant. His fist clenched with hatred when he thought about how he had to send everyone that he loved away from him to protect them from the malice of the Lovelace family. First, it was his beloved Grandma Zelda, whom he was not even allowed to call because he feared that the enemy would track his phone activity and use Zelda against him once again. The second was his beloved wife, Erica, whom he had only recently reconciled with after a whole lot of misunderstandings, but their relationship had to bear this heavy burden of separation. His heart ached to be in this room that they shared together, knowing that one side of the bed would remain empty for quite some time to come. After making sure it was safe, he sat cross-legged on the bed and practiced some meditation. It was already midnight in the blink of an eye, he had entered a Zen state of being when the cultivation of his own powers was at its peak. But at this moment, a sharp shout suddenly came from the originally quiet villa. Hayden opened his eyes immediately, opened the door and rushed out. The scream was obviously from Sandra, and it sounded like she was in danger. What's wrong? Hayden asked loudly as he arrived at the first floor. He saw that the lights were still on in Sandra's room but the other party did not respond to his question, although her screams continued to echo in the hallway. Hayden didn't have time to think too much. He kicked open the door and rushed in. The sight in front of him made him stunned, even a little angry. The housekeeper, Sandra, was standing in a corner at the head of the bed, her body trembling because of a poor creature below. What frightened Sandra was not actually an intruding assassin or a gangster. It was just a trembling mouse huddled in the corner. In fact, it looked more scared than Sandra. Hayden was about to cry but had no tears. He stomped his feet loudly, which immediately caused the frightened mouse to run around in the room. While Sandra was jumping and screaming, Hayden raised his leg and kicked the rat unconscious on the spot, causing the small creature to fly out through the window. Sandra, I didn't think you'd have such girlish fears. I thought you were a mature and invincible woman. Hayden looked at the pale Sandra with a tired smile. Sandra was really frightened and embarrassed, so she only covered her red face and shook her head as if she was having an anxiety attack. Relax. You don't have to be so embarrassed. Are there usually a lot of mice here? Hayden asked as if he had thought of something. We are in a villa area with a mountain behind us. I heard from the security guard that there were rats on the mountain before. 
but I closed all the doors and windows just before sundown so rats shouldn't be able to get in. I was sure I closed them all so I don't know how this happened. Sandra blushed and muttered softly. It's all right. Check again next time. Maybe you forgot something and... Hayden stopped mid-sentence as if he realized something. After carefully looking around Sandra's room, he closed the door and left. Hayden slowly went upstairs, and as he walked, he began to circulate the mystical energy in his body. He thought Sandra's screams were because of an incoming attack from the Lovelaces, but he was disappointed to know it was just vermin. But even so, what happened tonight was really strange, because if Sandra insisted that she closed all the doors and windows, how did the rat get in? Did that mean someone had broken in? More importantly, he could smell something strange in the house as well. At this time, the corners of his mouth were raised, revealing a strange smile that was difficult to understand. Hayden came to his room, and the moment he was about to enter, he suddenly ducked to the ground in a flash. Sure enough, just when he had entered the room, a flash of light quickly slid across the dark room from an inconspicuous corner. If Hayden hadn't acted quickly enough, this knife would definitely have severely injured him on the spot, or even killed him. He had anticipated the danger in advance and successfully avoided it. In turn, he clenched his jaw in fury and threw the ice needle in a specific direction before he even turned the lights on. Judging from the murderous aura emanating from the other party, Hayden could tell that this guy had a good background in martial arts and was most likely sent by the Lovelace family. Obviously, the previous episode in Sandra's room was just a deliberate distraction by the killer to divert Hayden's attention so that he could secretly hide in his room to assassinate him. The opponent's reaction was also very swift. When the sneak attack failed, he tried to launch another knife into Hayden's body. It's just that Hayden's speed was even better. Even though the killer whose face he couldn't see clearly avoided being hit on the chest, he was still stabbed by the ice needle in his shoulder. Then his body became stiff instantly, and then he leaned against the wall, unable to move at all. Hayden maximized the mystical energy in his body and was always on guard, trying to anticipate the assassin's next move. Then he stared coldly at the masked killer in front of him and said, You are very cunning. You actually came up with such a clever way to mix things up but you underestimate me too much. The killer on the opposite side actually chuckled and said, Hayden, you really deserve this reputation you've built for yourself. You are indeed not that easy to deal with. Originally, I wanted to create a romantic opportunity for you to have an affair, after saving that damsel in distress. I didn't expect that you were a decent man. You came into your room too fast, which is why I missed my mark. Hayden suddenly discovered that there was no fear or disappointment in the tone of the guy in front of him, who had half of his body paralyzed with the ice needle. He had no ability to move, let alone continue his assassination mission. Ideally, he should be very angry and hostile. On the contrary, he seemed very calm and collected, as if he was confident in the mission's outcome regardless of the hiccups on the way. This made Hayden's expression become solemn. What is it, Hayden? Why do you seem to be scared? Or do you have such little confidence in your ice needle? Do you really think you can seal my movements just because of your bloodline? The killer opposite seemed to be able to see through Hayden's thoughts with complete accuracy. Hayden's heart rate accelerated as he immediately turned on the lights to take a good look at this killer who sounded so supremely confident. However, he had no further clues because the man's face was completely masked. All he could see were the assassin's exposed eyes, which revealed an insidious look of ridicule.